Okay, guys, you're welcome back. Of course, I believe by now you must have covered everything we did around this model. So the next thing we are going to be looking at is basic retouching tool. So we're going to be looking at how to use the healing brush tool, the sports healing tool, the clothes stamp tool, the patch tool, and the content aware for you. Like I told you in the previous video that we are going to still explore some of those tools in depth so you have a proper understanding on how to use them. So let's quickly get into Photoshop. Now we are in Photoshop. Of course, this is exactly the screen we left off at. We are back in Photoshop. Now, the first thing we want to look at is how to use your healing brush and your spot healing brush. Too. So this is the healing brush. This is the healing brush over here. And this is the spot healing. So let's just do it exactly the way it is. So I'm just going to make a duplicate of my layer so I don't work destructively. I'm going to show you how to do that in when we get into layers in depth all right but for now let's focus on what we are doing now i want to take care of the blemishes on this image which is exactly what they are used for so all those tools i mentioned that save the content away few most of the times are used for taking care of blemishes on your object how do you do that now the difference between these two is that one allows you to select by yourself and the other uses AI to do the selection for you. Now, the, the spot brush tool, the spot healing brush tool uh, uses AI to do the selection. So if you look at the, the tutorial that is playing on my screen right now, you will notice that I just show you exactly how that works. Let me show you how that works in real life. So I'm just going to zoom in. Probably I want to remove this blemish here. So if I'm, if I'm using my spot healing brush tool, it's going to just need me to select these two areas, for example, and allow Photoshop detect exactly where to replace that with. Yeah, let me just do something very obvious so that when we do the before and after, you'll be able to see how much we have done. Now, this is what we did. This is the before, this is the after. So Photoshop uses its AI and intelligence to select areas around that place and use it to replace what you removed, depending on how well it saw it. But the next one, which is our healing brush tool, is the one that allows you do the selection by yourself. So you notice that as I'm hovering, it's already showing me uh, a sample is selected by itself how it's going to work so if i want to replace this one i'm just going to hold my alternate click on anywhere around that place make sure you don't go and click here it's going to look weird click on the area around that place and just paint on it. it's going to replace that so that's quickly how to the difference between the two so the first one which is our spot healing uh brush tool uses automation photoshop uses ai to fix that but the second one uses a uh, manual form of selection to fix that. Now, there is a limitation that this has. The limitation it has is that when, you're, when the place you want to remove is big, it's not going to do a very nice job there. Look at this area. Look at this area. See the way it's making that part look very, very weird. Look at the way it's making it look weird. And to fix that, we are going to now show you what is called the patch tool. So the, these two are used for removing seemingly small objects from your seemingly small uh, details from your object rather or blemishes from your object but when the the blemish becomes maybe like something this be you know that this is not going to be able to properly fix this let's see how it handles it so it's going to make it look weird yeah of course so to avoid that you can use a pass tool and now make a manual selection of that area just like this and now drag it and keep it on the on the area you want to use and replace that side and you see it do an amazing job look at this one and i love the way it blends the edges of the place you have replaced and it just gives it that natural look for uh what you want to do of course if you spend a little more time we are going to really really get that done beautifully but that's not what we are here for so you can just quickly go around your blemishes just like this and be able to just fix them with just dabbing or you can click on this one and be able to manually select where you want to replace the blemish with. Or you can use your pass tool to remove seemingly big areas, maybe like the eye bags, eye lines, something like that. So it just allows you to fix that. Or the edges where the makeup didn't blend in so well, you can just decide to blend that in using 
your pass through. That is basically what it is used for. So the next thing on our list is the clone stamp tool. So how do you use a clone stamp? Okay, so you can go to your clone stamp. Let's say I want to, uh, of course, does it does the same thing with your with your healing brush tool except for two major differences so the healing brush tool doesn't do large large uh cloning doesn't do large cloning and it doesn't carry it exactly with the way the same way it is it tries to blend it in into that particular area but the difference with that and clone stamp is that clone stamp is going to lift it the exact way it is and just place it on that area it doesn't try to blend it in here Another thing is that in your healing brush tool, or yeah, in your healing brush tool, when you make a selection, let's say you make a selection here and you are painting, even if you are moving around, it's going to still be blending stuffs in. But in your clone stamp, if you make a selection, if you are moving around, it's not going to be trying to blend it in. And I can actually just use my clone stamp and move this eye and just paint it over here so it will just duplicate everything in that area for me and place it here or something like that that's weird though but that's what we're looking at but i know that by now you have a basic understanding of how that works you can use it to remove objects from your scene or you can use it to introduce into your scene i don't know let's try and see if we can remove this pattern it's messing it up let's leave that alone okay all right so the next thing we have right there is our patch to the content that I think we already talked about the patch to say look let's look at the content aware feel I think at this point we might need to uh, bring in another image okay I can actually show you how to use that here so I can just pick up my uh, lasso tool my lasso tool make a selection of the eyes let me just show you now this is what content aware feel does for you I can right click on the image and go to content aware feel this one so if you click on it what it does is that it's going to try to look at other areas of that particular place you selected and try to clone that place it will try to clean it off let me use something that will look uh realistic and relatable let me just bring in an entirely different image maybe just give me a minute let's see what we can work with let's see what we can work with i need an image that has something we can remove in the scene. Just give me a minute. Uh, okay, so let's work with this. Let's work with this. Let's work with this. Okay, so. Excuse me. So if I drag this image and drop it over here and use my polygonal also to, to make a selection of this. So what the content aware field does is that it tries to replace this particular dummy sitting right here calculating the areas around it, everything in the scene, and okay, to try to find exactly what is going to match so that when it removes it, that place is not going to look weird. Of course, it's looking weird. And another thing you can do is to even manually uh, clean exactly where you want and where you don't want. This is one of the ways of using it. There's another way to use it. You can just hold your shift, click on your backspace and go to content and go to content aware press OK. It's not going to take you into that place. It will just clean it off straight up and you can as well make it in a way, do it in a way that you manually paint some areas in and remove some areas. See the way this one handles it. This one does it practically much more better because of the shape I'm having here. It's, it's trying so much to mimic the shape and give us a very seamless cloning, even though the image is a very low res, so it's finding it hard to identify the object. But it still pretty did a good job. Another way you can do that is go to your edit, go to content aware feel right here. So it's going to look slightly different from the first. So this is the, the same thing we did using our right click. So this that, that was the shortcut and this is the exact way to find it. So I'm going to escape that. That is basically how to use your content aware. So I prefer using the shift backspace own because it's faster for me unless I need to go and manually make some adjustment. Thank you for watching this amazing model. Hope you understand everything we talked about. If you have a question, just go to the comment section and drop your question and we'll do everything possible to answer them even in the next video or probably in the same comment section like i would always see take your time to understand every single thing we, we are teaching in this one after understanding the previous one so you can be able to improve on this one and 
understand it so you can also be able to understand the next video that we are bringing to you see you on the next one